So Geminis, welcome to your love, relationship, and romance reading. So first of all, here's the thing. Um, if there is something that you've, you've been questioning or, you know, trying to ask a partner, and if for whatever reason you feel intimidated, like if they shut down or if they refuse to talk to you, um, it's not a good sign that it's a healthy relationship, okay? A relationship needs to have an equal exchange of energy where you can talk about these things. No matter how difficult the topic is, if someone tries to shut you down and they're stonewalling, they're, they refuse to cooperate or they refuse to talk about a specific topic, it's not a sign of a healthy relationship. So you need to be very careful about that because I feel like some of you are dying to ask some questions and the partner is not cooperating and I'm also sensing it could go either way you're dying to get some information or your partner's dying to get some information and you're not talking so I feel like there's this push and pull energy with you and your relationship partner and if that's the case that relationship is not really going to go anywhere nor is it healthy okay so best to know that up front and try to remove yourself rather than wasting time in that relationship okay so that's the first thing the other thing that i'm sensing is um i feel you know i mentioned before in the general reading excuse me i feel like some of you health issues affecting a relationship so from your end or from their end but i'm sensing that i feel like it might be from their end okay health health issues um, either way, you know, take care of your health. Don't let it build up and especially be very, very honest with each other. Because when we're talking about health in relationships, it can be, you know, the, the, the worst case scenarios where it deals with like STIs, STDs and things like that. And then where, you know, the best case scenario, even though health issues are never the best case scenarios. Um, it could be like news about pregnancy. It could be conception. So I feel that whatever spectrum, wh wherever you fall on that spectrum, you need to be careful, okay? And you need to like have these serious conversations with your partner so that you can clear the air, all right? So your reading looks good so far, but let me just see here. Oh, we've got the tower, you guys. Okay. So, earth sign, fire sign. Okay. So, let me talk about this. Because I have some major arcana cards and a few things that worry me. So, let me just, first of all, talk about this. We have here, crowning this reading is something that you're thinking about. Eight of Swords. This is a situation where you are very stuck and you're not sure how to move like do I just let it go what do I do how do I approach the situation how do I approach this person feeling a little bit stifled feeling almost like um, scared to do something if you once again are dealing with a partner who's very very domineering powerful and they prevent you from doing things that is not a sign of a healthy relationship so I know that emotionally, you know, you, you might be invested in it, but from an outsider's perspective looking in, it seems to me like you're scared to, to find out the truth. You're scared to ask somebody something and you're really scared about, you're scared that the truth is going to come to light or you're scared, you know, it's like being in denial in a situation. So the perception of this card is she's surrounded by swords. She feels very stuck. She doesn't know what to believe. She doesn't trust everything that she sees. She doesn't really know whether or not she's able to do something. That's the perception. The reality of this card is nothing's really holding you back, okay? So I feel like if you're dealing with this, please take care of yourself first. Love yourself enough to leave a situation that's stifling or that has you feeling very fearful. It's linked up here with the tower, and that's why I feel like it's very fear-based. It's a situation that is reaching, 
its imminent end. So it's not going to serve its purpose in your life anymore. So you want to get out of it before, you know, the, the breakdown happens. That's when all the catastrophe, that's when all the debris start falling on you. And that's when you need to get out because before all of it implodes. So as an air sign, you have a lot of in, uh, intuitive hits, like psychic hits. And I feel like all of this is coming into the picture to help you avert some thing, some major calamity that can happen down the road, you know. Um, I'm getting a very strong physical violence, a lot of fear that's coming up within you guys. So if that's the case, if you're just like stuck in a relationship where someone is very oppressive or, dom or domineering, the next logical progression is they're going to get very physical. So if you're stuck here thinking, oh no, it's not going to happen to me, or what's next? Well, the next step is not going to be pretty, okay? So please do your best to get yourself out of this situation. I'm saying this in a very nonchalant way, but I do see a lot of, I feel it, a lot of fear. I feel the fear. So I'm trying to be rational about this and to tell you guys, the next progression is not going to be good, okay? So try to get yourself out. The other two cards that come in, this is a major, major control card, okay? So you might be dealing with this person who refuses to let you go. Every time you try to go, they soften up their energy and they tell you, no, don't leave me. I can't live without you. And you feel guilty because, you know, you, you're you constantly at conflict with yourself being the sign of the twins. So this is them guilt tripping you, making you stay, or this is them physically barring your way, preventing you from staying. They're controlling, they're domineering. And as well, four of swords, praying, hoping the situation is going to get better. And so we have all of these cards that indicate to me power and control and dominance issues. And we have the tower. This is not a good energy. This is like the, the house of cards come f tumbling down. So if you are dealing with this, Geminis, please get yourself out of it, okay? So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that, okay? Because the rest of the reading, I feel like it's uh, speaking to a different crowd. So that's the first message I really want you guys to absorb. Let's talk about the rest of this. In the past... We have here Eight of Wands, and the Eight of Wands is a very good card about dating. This is like going out on the town, you know, like um, seeing a lot of people, meeting a lot of people, having a lot of people adoring you, uh, wanting to date you, asking you out, you know, people constantly trying to call you, people that you might not even like calling you. So you have a lot of people, a lot of suitors, a lot of people that are just like, what are you doing, you know, Tuesday night? And they might even ask you, what are you doing Monday uh, afternoon when you're like at work? So I feel like you are getting a lot of suitors, a lot of admirers coming your way, ringing your doorbell, texting you, messaging you, like going through social media, finding every possible way that they can to communicate with you, okay? And then there are also some of you having a lot of communication with a uh, a person that you like, okay? So this is like electronic communication. You might not have met them in person yet, or you, you know, like when you're not with them in person, you're constantly texting each other, emailing each other, and having a lot of beautiful communication. It's linked up here with the Nine of Wands, and the Nine of Wands is in the reverse position. So we have here the Eight of Wands moving into the Nine of Wands. So I feel like for many of you, you've been through quite a few relationships that might not have been very healthy, that might not have been very good. And you were went through a relationship that left a lot of scars on your body. You know, like um, f could be literally or even um, figuratively. So once again, but when we're talking about figuratively, you've been through a lot. You've been through kind of like a ride or die type of a relationship with another person where you know how to sacrifice for them. You took took the brunt of the uh, damage for them. 
and you know how to love. And so you're looking at these relationship prospects as if, oh, you guys are just, you know, after me for certain things. You're, when things get rough, you're not going to be there. So I feel like you're turning your back on these really positive communications, these people that really like you. You're turning your back because you feel like they don't have what it takes to be with me. So I feel some of you are dealing with that. Which brings us to the present situation. We have here the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups, basically, it's a soulmate connection. It's a very sweet, warm, loving energy. It's two people who have an emotional connection with one another. And um, I feel like this is going to play out one of two ways. When you have an, an emotional connection with someone, it basically means that you don't have to speak. They understand what you're thinking. They understand what you're feeling. So that's the positive manifestation of it. The more naive and transient and less stable manifestation of this is two people who feel like they're soulmates because they've been through similar experiences. They've been through a lot of hurts, a lot of possibly dealt with infidelity, dealt with abuse. And so they're, they, they cling on to each other thinking, oh, we're soulmates. So you want to be careful which side of the coin you're on because I feel like this is a very idealistic energy. But it can also indicate a situation where you have somebody that really, really understands you. And it could be a, a once in a lifetime, you know, a long lasting relationship. Or it could just be coming together so that you can heal each other from the past negative experiences and then you part ways, okay? So it's not so cut and dry and it's not as reliable it's linked up here with the three of swords and the three of swords is what led me to believe that this might be a situation where you feel like you're soulmates because you've been through the same things but i feel like you're together for a very short moment in time to heal each other to reassure each other that it's not us it's the person that hurt us we didn't do anything wrong but I feel like this is not going to be a long-term relationship. Does that make sense? So don't fall too fast. Don't idealize it. Uh, let it play out naturally. Just don't idealize it. Don't think that this is the one, okay? Um, I'm sensing both of you have been hurt in the past. And you're here to restore each other's uh, self-esteem. You're here to restore your faith in humanity. And you're here to really, you know, give each other that love and support and nurturing so that you can heal each other or you, you can heal yourself by being with the other person and they as well, vice versa. On uh, the foundation here, we have the Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles, this is a really attractive card. This indicates usually I think of it as a very exotic female especially somebody of, um, you know, like, especially like um, Asian descent is usually what I think of this card. And usually when I narrow down, you know, geographical location, it usually comes out as like somebody with Asian descent. But either way, this is a card about having a lot of financial abundance, spending a lot of time building up your empire, building up your wealth, and possibly not having enough time to date. Um, and also I'm feeling as if Many of you, you have a lot of suitors. You have a lot, a lot, a lot of suitors. And you're up at a point where you're just like, you're really, really picky. Uh, money comes first, work comes first, success comes first. And so you're at a point where you can be extra picky about, you know, who you get involved with because you don't want a repeat of the past. It's linked up as well with the Queen of Pentacles, okay? Um, for some of you, you might be dealing with this really attractive person who is very financially stable, but she is very, very frivolous with money. So it could be a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. So that's the first thing. I'm also seeing that it could be a male figure, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, somebody that uh, feels like they need a lot more time with you. Somebody that might be kicking up a fuss because they feel a little bit neglected. 
um, I'm also sensing a lot of values differences between you and this person. And I'm also sensing that they care about you, but you're, you might be a little bit more on the aloof side and you might f fake the fact that, oh, they don't mean a lot to you. So for whatever reason, I feel like you have a lot of things going on in your life and you have a lot of suitors and this person, this earth sign might be feeling very insecure about their position, their, uh, their, their space in your life. And they don't like that. They don't like the fact that being with you makes them question their worth. There might be self-esteem issues that your subconscious, it's not your fault. It's like you're bringing up self-esteem issues in them that they need to deal with. Okay. So I feel like it's kind of like a push pull kind of love hate relationship, you know, like love hate relationship here where you understand each other. You really like each other. The connection is really strong. The connection is amazing. The emotional, spiritual and physical connection is amazing. But I feel like they might be very critical. They might want to hurt you. They might say things that inadvertently cuts you down. And now that you're on the defensive mode, you won't let them back in for whatever reason. So that element is coming through. I'm also feeling as well, some of you have um, started rebuilding your wealth, have started to really rebuild your sense of self-worth. But I feel like the sense of self-worth is very external. It's very material and it's very superficial. Deep down, you're still very hurt. You're still not really sure what you're worth. You're not really sure what you deserve. So I feel like the, 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 the way in which you project your energy, you know, on the surface, you might act like you have everything, but then underneath, underneath all of it, you feel a little bit like out of sorts. You feel a little bit unbalanced and you feel a little bit like that you're not worthy of something. Okay. Be careful about this energy. Going out dating when you're carrying this baggage will inevitably let you attract people who are very low vibrational, who might have control issues, who might have dependency issues, who might have boundary issues. So you need to be very careful. Work on yourself first, build yourself up to the point where you feel worthy and abundant and lovable. And I feel like some of you might already be aware of this and that's why you're spending your time being single, taking time off from people, which is good. So I feel like you have that, you know, that self-awareness, um, moving forward, moving forward into the future we have here. The King of Wands. This is a fire sign. Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. It's linked up with the Page of Wands. So I feel like for some of you who are out there dating, there is somebody who's really catching your interest. So fire sign. And it can be male or female. This might be somebody that has children, okay? Because a fire sign linked up with a page basically means a family unit. Somebody with children. Somebody... Um, that already, you know, they, they might have had like a separation, they might be divorced as well, and they have children, or they might not have ever been married, but they have children out of wedlock. So you have this person where you're exchanging a lot of communication with. And I feel like this is a really, really loving, caring, protective type of person. Um, some of you, you might have been, I feel like this is a new partner coming into the picture. And this is somebody that knows everything that you've been through in the past. And they really uh, admire how strong you are. And they want to protect you, you know, so they, they know that you've been through the ringer. I, I'm seeing like there might have been some abuse issues and they want to protect you. They want to be there for you. They want to take care of you. And they do want to almost like to 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 take over the role of the mother or the father in your life. And I'm also sensing as well, you want to be careful because this is a good energy. It's a very uh, benevolent type of person. Okay. But I feel like he or she can be a little bit more on the domineering side. And they also might treat you in a way 
where they think they they kind of patronize you you know they're just like are you sure you can do that why don't i do it for you so that's not a good start okay so if that sounds like it happens for you you need to kind of like stand your ground you need to be like yes of course i can do that how can you how dare you question my abilities so i feel like you need to jokingly kind of like throw it back at them and don't take it lying down because i feel like it's setting a very very uh, unhealthy pattern okay so it's not a bad person but i feel like they can be a little bit arrogant and a little bit uh, condescending and they might patronize you by doing or making these off-handed remarks and if that's what you're dealing with set them in their place use humor use whatever um you know you're you're very quick thinkers so i don't feel like that's going to be a problem for you guys but you know set them in their place make sure that you're firm about this i don't feel it's a bad person i feel like you know the relationship can be very good but it seems to me like they really understand you they sympathize with you so there's a lot of empathy in the relationship but do not let one person you know do everything in the relationship okay so it's like one person carrying the weight of the relationship which might not be altogether healthy so just to sum up i feel like a lot of you are meeting new people um a lot of you are basically like taking relationships to the next level and i'm also sensing you know this cluster here really just doesn't jive well with me i feel like there's a lot of fear I feel like there's a lot of um uh, fear of like reprisal, fear of a relationship partner, hoping, wishing things are going to get better. And it's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. So you need to remove yourself from that situation, okay? So remove yourself first and then, you know, think about things after because I don't think this situation's going to get better. So, I'm going to leave it at that, Gemini's. I feel like we're dealing with different energies here. Um I hope the reading has been helpful for you guys. I will be back for your mid-month, okay? Hang in there and take care of yourself. If you're dealing with this, please um get somebody to help you if you can't do it on your own, okay? Take care of yourself, okay? I'm really worried about this. So um you can email me. You can email me and just, you know, share your experiences and see what you can do, okay? So, I wish you the best. Please, please, please take care of yourself. Bye-bye.